Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. But today we are doing season, uh, episode 6 of the latest season of Master Chef called Feeding the Coast Guard. And um, that's what we're doing. It was on last night. And uh, what do you think, Marco? What do you think about the latest cast off of the um, of the show tonight or last night? I thought it was well deserved, although there were a couple of other nominees, but this one did something right in front of Gordon. This person did something right in front of Gordon Ramsay that was unforgivable, and I think he was just taken totally taken aback. I mean. Usually I see him, and I don't know if he does this for the camera, with getting really angry and yelling and almost having a hissy fit, you know, breakdown. And this time he was like, it's like his mouth had dropped down to the floor. I mean, I, I really, I mean, he was quietly in shock instead of angrily in shock, where he's yelling and raving and throwing people out of the kitchen and... I don't know, maybe he was told to tone it down or something. No, maybe he has, doesn't, doesn't he have to because of the, didn't he have some voice problem or something where he oh, has to know. tone it down or was that, that someone be, else? Uh, Rachel Ray had a, a voice problem. Well. She really hurt her voice. Badly. Okay, it's time to review. I didn't really, I don't really like the show at all. It's really like a miserable show to watch. It's depressing. The people are miserable. The challenges are miserable. Like, there's there's nothing good in the show. It's just totally over-dramatic, over-melodrama. Uh, there's not really many funny moments, and it's just like a pain to sit through. Like, the way that these people... It's like, are they even chefs? Like, they're, they're just so bad at what they do. Uh, it seems like, and, and and that's another problem is that it has a, especially this episode has a feeling of artificiality from the editors. The editors completely misrepresented what was going on at certain points. Like in the first half of the episode, they focus completely on uh, the blue team with uh, Christian leading the team, and they try to make it look like the blue team is going to be the ones to be to go home, or to lose. And then in the second half, they show the red team. And not only that, but they have this conflicting thing where all the guests are saying that the red team's food is better, seemingly. And it's like they're tricking you, and they're, they're misrepresenting... So I really can't say, like, what's real and what's not. It just feels so fake and phony, but it feels so real and overdramatic at the same time. Like, this is not a fun show to watch. And you have more of that stupid shit at the beginning where, uh, you know, those two girls have this little rivalry, a fake rivalry. It is fake because they don't really act like they mean it. Where not this time. Yeah, they, they, they just, they sound so phony and fake, like they're acting for the camera. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want her to be on my team because she called me a name. <laughs> and it's, and it's like, it, you know, this is just complete <laughs> bullshit. You're a fake, you're a fraud, you're a liar. Why are you pretending like there's some sort of rivalry going on? It's so gay. It's so gay. And it's just so stupid. Like, did the producers tell you to do that for, like, five extra dollars on uh, off camera? Like, if, if you say that she's a bad and you don't like her, I'll slip you a five off camera. Like, that that's what it seems like. Like, that, that's how stupid it is. And so we already start off the episode with more of that. Negativity. It's just stupid. Even with the kids. I, I like I gotta say, Master Chef Junior was way better than this shit. Master Chef Junior was a thousand times more entertaining than whatever the hell this 
adult soap opera supposed to be? What is this, Safi? What's going on in this show? I, I don't know, but... What are they doing? I'm wondering if, if it isn't very much fun to watch, what is it like being there and cooking and competing? I have a feeling, because you know that when you watch a game, a football game or a baseball game, if they're not having some fun in what they're doing, you know, I know it's strictly business, they're employees, they're business people doing their jobs, but still, they have to like what they do. They, 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 if they couldn't do it if they didn't like it, because they'd probably get injured, but it's the same thing with this. I don't think if they liked what they're, if they don't like what they're doing or if this, that the environment is, I don't know, extra stressful or they can't take it like before. And maybe it was just as stressful, but they just, they all seem reticent and nervous and um, not uncomfortable. And you can feel it, so therefore, when you watch it, you feel uncomfortable too. And um, as far as like, I must have missed it because I had, I was getting dinner or something. Yeah, it was right when I had the dinner out and I was getting it out. But where the girl said, or one of them, I don't know. It sounds like one of them said they didn't want to be on the same team as the other. I don't, I sense... Yeah, the black, the black girl said she didn't want to be on the team with Emily. Oh, well, I... Beca because she called her sassy in another team challenge. Well, I like, just... this is just so gay. I think that's just contrived. Yeah, I, it, it because really is. they really, they're more grown up than that, and they... I just don't think that they're... I just think that's stupid. They act more like kids than the MasterChef Juniors. Yeah, they do, and they and the kids cook better than they did. Yeah, they cook better food too. And I and they, it's almost like I don't know that first the guy who got booted. I won't say who it is yet, but he acted like he was frozen, like he was just like let's say you take a test and you're one of those people who gets really upset about taking tests and you just freeze. You can't remember anything. You sweat. I mean, you're under real extreme stress. He was like that. He just was frozen. Well, what happened was it started off and with these disastrous leaders. Yeah, they picked two. Up. How did they pick the leaders they, anyway? They, was it something from they last talked. Week? Safi, just listen. Don't. Uh, Sorry. You're just over explaining like usual. Uh, you have both teams decide by themselves which oh. person to be the leader. Oh. And Christian really wanted to be the leader on the blue. Oh. And Alejandro really wanted to be the leader on the red. Oh. And they were both disastrous choices. Yeah. They both were not fit to be leaders no. at all. No. They and never will be. it was clear that they were not going to be good from the very beginning. Like, the, the judges seemed kind of surprised. Like, they said, like, ooh, these are not very good. This, is, this isn't this is going to go well. And I said one of them was having a, didn't he call him petulant? He was having we'll a talk about time. that, Safi. That comes later. So, you had Alejandro who went home on his own season for being a bad leader in another team challenge. So, why would he want to be a team leader again? That's number one issue, is that these people came back after being eliminated, and for some reason they haven't learned from their mistakes. Not yeah. only that, but they don't even care about their past mistakes. Like, it, you'd think that he would be like, uh, no, I don't want to be a leader on a team challenge. That, that didn't go very well last time, uh, did it? Uh, maybe I shouldn't do that this time. No, of course not. He chooses to be the team captain, and it was a stupid choice. And I knew, and I was like, uh, maybe he could do a good job. No, no. Uh, he he was really bad. Not at all. And to be fair, though, there were other bad people too, like uh, especially Bree, uh, the blonde girl. Like she was like, oh, 
she was just like uh like she was doing an advertisement and yeah. holding up things for like placement like she's an actress yeah she's just acting on camera yeah i don't see her being a chef at all and she was terrible in her own season anyway yeah. and she was the expediter and she her her version of expediting was saying oh, i guess everyone did a good job uh, I, don't, I don't i'm not going to really check even though that's the whole role that i'm doing yeah, and she, so she let all this, she's going to let all this raw meat go to the guests because uh, she's too busy smiling at the camera and shit. They were, they were supposed to be, she and her friend, and I never remember his name, but the one who does desserts, and he is really good, but I don't think he'll get it either. Um, Twig boy. He's, he's a very nice person and very supportive and helpful to everybody, but he, I don't just don't see him winning. I don't either. But he and she are friends. They've actually been doing, uh, since they both rebooted off their season, Sorry. they've been working together. That's anyway, irrelevant. They were, their, their uh, thing where they were doing quality control, which Mark was talking about, letting steaks go out raw. And the steaks were actually cold and raw. And they had let them go out because they didn't, I don't know what they were doing. She wasn't paying attention. Smiling, and, and I'm not sure what he was doing, just going along with her. I'm not sure. They weren't doing anything else, as it, far as I could tell. It was really bad. And so I actually thought she almost did worse than Alejandro, except Alejandro had one particular moment. But hey, let's go to the blue team, because... For a lot of the episode, they just focused on the blue team <laughs> yeah. as a way to trick you into thinking the blue team is going to be the ones to go home. It's called a red herring. Yeah, it's called a shit herring for a bad melodrama show that is shit. You, you had this Christian guy, uh, his name is Christian, uh, <laughs> and yeah. he was a terrible captain. For starters, they're talking about what food to make, and he's like, Okay, we're going to make this, this, and this. And other people were like, what about this? And he literally, like, it was creepy. The <laughs> he way he stared down. He looked like a serial killer. The way he's staring at them, he's like, no, we're not doing that. And, but then he had this thing about the sauces, which was interesting. He did give in to the sauce because Brandy had an idea for a, a sauce that I don't know if it sounded good. A chimichurri? Is it, that what you're It was a tomato gastric. Oh, that thing. And then he had a different kind of sauce. And I'd have to taste both sauces. I didn't think hers sounded good, but uh, he said, let's try both. And that was a good decision. I thought that that was good. Uh, but that was the only thing where anyone else had any say. And immediately he started acting like... He started acting like uh, Andrew in season three of uh, Master Chef Junior when they did the restaurant takeover. Safi hasn't gotten to that yet, uh, but Andrew was acting like that, and he was clearly just doing it to show off. But I felt like Christian was doing it because he genuinely thought that that was the way to lead a team, and it was a terrible way to lead the team, and. You had the, the guy with the, the weird hair, and he was actually having to temper him down. Uh, but then there was this disastrous thing that happened where the weird hair guy put potatoes in a small pot because he said they'll, they'll cook faster that way. Yeah, and And true. instead of putting it in a bigger pot, a bigger pot would have more potatoes for more people. Yeah, and so Christian came over and put the big pot on the stove with the cold water and poured the hot water with the potatoes in the small pot into the big pot. So he poured hot potatoes into cold water, ice cold water, and and, and it was like it was such a, a bitch thing to do, like He's not, like, that's not his position. Like, I don't care if he's captain. That's not his position. Uh, if, if that guy was going to screw up with potatoes. Should just let him do it on his own. Yeah, should have let him crash his own car. He was uh, making a, a pan of potatoes that I would make for three people. 
No, I, it was deceptive. There was, there was more potatoes than that. So well, that's good because that's only six potatoes at least. And well, I, so. I think he, they were just doing it for for the first table and then he was going to, I don't know. That's just stupid. It, uh, How many but people did they did serve? A hundred people. Yeah. Uh, but they, sh they should have just let him fail on his own. And he Just because he's the captain doesn't give him the right. So he did that and that's when Gordon said, you have Christian on the blue team, and he's acting like a petulant teenager. <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty funny because he was acting a lot like Mafia Don yep. as well from that Master Chef like Junior season eight. It was almost like seeing Mafia Don grown yeah. up, uh, except for I think Christian's better. Yeah. Uh, but that was creepy and. Uh, but that was pretty fun. That was the only funny, good moment from the episode was hearing Gordon's commentary. Because just, just the fact that he said that, you know that he was saying things like a, about Mafia Don off camera. You know, he's, he was probably saying Mafia Don's acting like a little shithead and stuff off camera. And yeah. after that, it was mostly just Alejandro doing nothing but not communicating he's, he's like frozen cooking rare steaks not even cooking steaks to where they're rare they're raw they're raw and that's weird because i mean they're already doing them rare but for some reason <laughs> everyone actually loved the steak like it seemed like a lot of people liked the steak from what they showed yeah they interview you know they interview people they go around joe goes around maybe gordon uh, uh, around, but I think it was just Joe, it seems like, would ask a table of people, well, how do you like your steak, or how do you like the fish, or which do you like better? And for the most part, everybody liked the steak the most. Oh, there were a few fish people, but it was the steak. It was deceptive, Safi. It was a red herring. <laughs> there was a funny interaction with Joe and a customer where he had a, rare, a raw steak, and Joe brought him another one. Now, that was pretty funny because it, it's it's sad how little Joe participates in these restaurant challenges because I think he'd be a lot more entertaining than uh, Gordon is because Gordon just does it every time. It's like Hell's Kitchen Light. Well, what's Aram doing? What, what did he do? I never heard him do much of anything. I think Aram was like, uh, I don't know, maybe he was handing people drinks or napkins or something like that like you know he's gordon's bitch so he's just doing something small like that he's not going to do anything that important i, mean, I didn't uh, see him go up to any of the people the cooks i didn't see him going up to the people to ask them what they thought about their meal maybe he was holding the boom microphone i don't know for people uh, because he, he, you know, it, th that's expected for Aaron to just not hardly do anything because he's Gordon's bitch. And finally, Alejandro did the unthinkable, and he dropped an entire tray of six steaks on the ground. Six beautiful steaks. And he picked them up and put them on the grill. And Gordon and, saw the whole. <laughs> Thing. That part was hilarious as well, you know, watching Gordon, because Gordon, usually he's very loud and just like completely like, <laughs> like a demon, uh, but when he saw that, he was like visibly horrified, like, and disturbed. He was. Like, it, it was funny. Which you've never, <laughs> I've never seen that. It's usually anger. <laughs> he invited Alejandro over there. He's like, why did you do that and Alejandro's like I thought that the grilling was going to kill the bacteria <laughs> and he almost like if he could have he would have blown a gasket and that was that was just so oh but I think he was so <laughs> horrified and shocked that he couldn't he was just like he, he was just like in shock that that guy would do that because the guy who does doesn't he work in a kitchen or he has worked in several as a chef, and he, I'm sure he wouldn't let anybody else get away with that. Why would he think he's going to get away with that? Well, Safi, you don't have any room to talk, because let's explain about Safi. That, uh, 
usually we have tomato cheese and grilled soup and uh, we leave the grilled, grilled we leave the grilled cheese br- what did i say you said grilled soup <laughs> okay uh, she leaves the grilled soup set uh, the grilled the grilled cheese bread out uh, for it to get a little stale like a thanksgiving bread type of thing for stuffing and uh, there was this one evening where all the flies are just crawling all over the pieces of bread. Oh, that's not true. He's exaggerating. Like ten, ten plus flies no, just landing on the bread, sitting on, on there, the crawling show. around. Let's not make And I lie. said, uh, Safi, I'm not eating that. Uh, there's flies getting all over the bread. And what Safi said was just so bizarre. It was like, it was like just like, oh, this is mental illness. Marco is exaggerating she said, and don't listen to anything he says. She said, well, uh, the bacteria will get cooked out of the bread from the flies when Marco? it gets cooked on the pan. Okay. That's an exaggeration. No, so it's just not. don't listen. Safi, you said fly bread good. <sighs> That's gross. Okay, well, y'all, never mind gross okay move on so that's what Safi did so it was kind of reminiscent of that Not a little really. bit uh, although with Alejandro I wasn't 100 members of the Coast Guard either. it doesn't matter who it is it doesn't I matter know. if it's a homeless person I know uh, so Alejandro you knew that he it was sad because I kind of wanted Christian to go home because yeah, I he was acting so horrible. I didn't like his negative attitude and his uh, like where he's he has to have control over the whole menu without any input from anybody else but sadly that mistake was just unforgivable and of course the red team lost even though another member took over as captain after that and he did a better job and he did, yeah he did a good job but he couldn't save what he i mean what the guy what? did with the stakes he couldn't, it was, the, what was done was done. They didn't so, give the bad food to anybody. They threw it in the trash. So Alejandro so, went home. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I knew that Alejandro would go home at some point. You know, there's no way that he was going to win the season. I thought he had a good chance, but you know. No. Watching this, watching this episode, watching this season, sorry. I don't know if there's anybody on there who looks like they're a winner I, I i don't think i can support uh, anybody right now i mean i'm just looking at them and it's you know granted really it's the beginning of the season they haven't had many opportunities for one to be so focused on like i think Christian i think and Alejandro. i think i think brandy could win you know the blonde uh semi or finalist whatever oh, oh i yeah. think she could win I also think that Shane could win, Maybe. which is a uh, would be unexpected for people, but it'd be fun. You, you know, he he was a very underrated Master Chef Junior player. Mm -hmm. I mean, he destroyed everyone. Like uh, the only reason he went home was just for like his first mistake the whole season, basically. Oh. And uh, he he was a very underrated player. I can see him winning if he uh, continues to grow. Grow, and and that's the unfortunate thing about some of these Master Chef Junior winners is that or losers is that it doesn't seem like they're ready for Master Chef, uh, even though the people on Master Chef were not ready for Master Chef, like Alejandro, picking up steaks off the floor. I mean that's that's not no no chef should be doing that whatsoever. Like that's just so wrong in so many ways. This uh, isn't the floor either; it's the ground. Yeah, the that, outside. That was like just. Safi, you would eat that. No, I wouldn't. I just thinking that makes me want to erp. So. I, it's it's a shame because the guy was a very nice guy. He's nice, but he but he he's just frozen. He he's, just seemed out of his. Depth. He's not top five material no, anyway. He's like not. Uh, in his other season, he had an issue where he would overcomplicate everything oh. because he used to uh, he used he grew up without having a lot of ingredients, oh. and so now that he has a lot of ingredients, remember he never tried apple before mm -hmm. until 
Aunt Master Chef and they showed him trying it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he just overcomplicated everything. But in this season, his issue is just himself. Like, the fact that he chose to be captain to begin with was an issue. It like, it's like he has stage fright or something. I, yeah. I just can't describe it. He just seemed frozen. He just wasn't ready to be a captain. No. Of course, that's a shame. I, I just don't know who is. Like, everyone seems kind of blue. Or, is that what you call it? Or green? Green. Everyone seems kind of green. Except for that guy who, t <laughs> who took over uh, from Alejandro because, Alejandro because Gord literally said, you people need to get together and choose another captain. Yeah, he fired Alejandro as yeah. well from being captain. So they, and this, they, they all agreed, even the two girls who, quote, don't like each other, which is BS, I think. They even wanted this guy. They thought he was, and they liked him. They listened to him, and they got through. But they could, it was too late. He even did, though he did let, he didn't. Some of those stakes, though, didn't something go raw or something? Something happened, and he didn't see it or missed it. Even with him, I don't know. It even, was just too late. Though. Even though it was sad, he went home or it was like fitting, then something happened where I thought, uh-oh, he should not have gone home. Because right after he got eliminated, literally right after, Gordon says, Oh, man, another semifinalist just went home. When are you get people going to start taking this seriously? Huh. And it showed, oh, okay. Yet again, the reason why he got sent home was because of their agenda. He's a semi-finalist, so send more semi-finalists home. It'll make people, it'll raise the stakes. Oh, no. All the top players are getting knocked off. Oh, no. And it's like, I can't take the, the position of semi-finalist seriously when the judging decisions are so terrible. Like... How did that blonde woman get to the top two in that one season? Remember the the, uh, the one who auditioned and failed with the mole? How did she get to the top two? Because of the judge's terrible decision making. And so to, to say like, oh no, another semifinalist went home. Like, who cares? Like, semifinalist, that's not a very high place uh, to be in my opinion, uh, in terms of the, the people that have been chosen from them. Yeah. So if anything, they should just say, oh, it just shows how terrible judges we've been the past few seasons. Like, they should have said that instead of pretending it's some sort of a indicator of like, oh, no, everyone's in danger. Everyone should start taking things more seriously. Like, but they should, though. Like, everyone acts like they've never done MasterChef before, for the most part. So, but that was disappointing. I was like, yeah, he deserved to go home. Yeah, he did. But then as soon as Gordon says, another semifinalist, I said, oh, he shouldn't have gone home. Because we know why he went home. I just think that that... The thing with the ground, it's just, it's like, it's, you can't. I know, I it's know. It's like you're having a, a, getting it being a drunk driver or something for he, the he, fifth time. Or he something. didn't have to mention that it's, that it's another semifinalist that we know. Yeah, he shouldn't have done that. We know why he did that, because that's his little agenda. He gets these little agendas where he, he sees something, like he, MasterChef Junior Season 2, he saw that boy, Logan, and he said, ooh, that's Gordon Jr. <laughs> and so so then that's what the season became all about. And it's the same thing in this season. All the semifinalists are going home. Like, who's going to go home next week? Another semifinalist? A finalist? Like, And then they still won't send Tommy home? <laughs> and Tommy, he's the uh, little uh, guy from New Orleans. He's very expressive and creative and he's kind of a I guess he's into fashion which he I guess by what he wears you could see that but he to me he's only there for decoration and I know that sounds terrible but he's not a chef 
he's not going to be master chef. No, he's not. He's not going to win. I don't even think he's going to come in second place. He just isn't qualified. He's ex he's very expressive and showy, but he is really. The he's last a fan two, favorite. Yeah, but the last two shows, he has been very stressed out. I can tell. Yeah. He's sweating. They're all stressed out because they have to do this asinine thing where they have to make three plates. Yeah, well, which this is, was multiple plates. I'll say that, well, they have to make three identical plates. Oh, well, yeah, and there are other... And know. I'll say this, that that was one of the good things about this episode was that we don't have to watch any of that bullshit. Where it's like, oh no, plate number two has an inconsistency with plate number one. Plate number three is missing that that plate one and two have and it's like who cares uh yeah. i give this episode it's really tough because i just don't like the show oh sophie that's I'm still having some issues that's not stomach. for me but that's from sophie it's my stomach so what do i rate this episode i don't know uh, i'll just give it a c minus well I'll, I'll give it a i'll i'll, I'll give it a uh yeah, I'll give it a C minus because it it's not average. It's not good enough to be average, but it's not bad enough to be a D. So I give it a C minus. Safi. I gave it a C minus. Yeah, so let's complete the review now. Well, if everybody liked this uh, video, if you liked it, please uh, press the like button, and please uh, consider being one of our subscribers. We would really appreciate you. And so, and leave a comment, too, about are you watching this series? What do you think about it? What could be better? Whatever you want to say. And goodbye, everybody. Bye.